Hi, my name is Don Shepard. I'm the director of the McGill Interdisciplinary Initiative in Infection and Immunity. And I'm recording this from my office here at the McGill University Health Center, where I've just completed a week on the COVID wards. And I'm pleased to report that indeed, as you read in the news, our case numbers are dropping and the amount of disease we're seeing is going down. So that has put us in kind of a limbo state, and that's what I want to talk about today. How do we coexist with COVID in this new period where the rates of disease in the community are going down, but we don't have a vaccine, so we're kind of coexisting with the virus and trying to figure out how to manage risk? And so as you go back to work, as the restrictions are lifted, it's important to think about how are you personally going to manage risk? And when you manage risk, I think there's a few things we can think about. So I'm gonna divide it into three big topics. The, the first is your encounter risk. So obviously the less virus that's circulating in the community, the less risk you have. But there's some caveats there. Even though there may be a low number of cases today, we know that the cases are actually only telling us what happened in terms of transmission a few days ago to a week ago. And we saw this during March break when it wasn't which countries you went to that had coronavirus that were the problem, it's which countries you went to that the week later had coronavirus because people were transmitting before they were symptomatic. So you do have to view this with caution and we've seen in uh, Germany and South Korea that there are these micro outbreaks that actually will continue to happen and we need to be vigilant about those. So you need to pay attention to that, you need to listen to public health tracing and make sure that you're aware of where you are so that if there are micro outbreaks we can deal with them and most importantly if you're symptomatic, you need to stay out of your workplace, you need to stay home, and you need to get tested. Because if you don't get tested, we can't identify this micro outbreak, we can't find your contacts, and we can't extinguish that particular little micro outbreak. So that's kind of the exposure, your chance of actually meeting up with someone who has virus. Then the next big thing is, of course, transmission. Now, it seems silly to talk about transmission. We all know how this virus is transmitted, predominantly through the air. And obviously, if you're standing next to someone who has coronavirus and they cough in your face, you have a high risk of getting coronavirus. But that's not our reality right now. Our reality right now is figuring out how we work with people who are appear and feel healthy, but maybe asymptomatic transmitters, either because they're never gonna develop symptoms or they're in the pre-symptomatic phase. So let's say you're in your work environment or your day-to-day -day life and you do encounter unknowingly someone with coronavirus. How do we know whether they're going to transmit to you? And there's actually a very simple kind of formula that you can think about, and that is the amount of time and the exposure. Why do I say that? Because it's not one single virus particle that's going to infect you. You need many virus particles. Your innate immune system, the defenses that your body has against all viruses, whether you're immune to them or not, can eliminate a lot of the viruses that you're exposed to. And we think the infectious dose of coronavirus may be as high as several million intact viral particles that you have to inhale before you're going to get sick. So if you think about this, what does that mean? That means that when you're walking past somebody in the corridor, if they don't cough directly on you, you're not likely to get exposed to enough particles to get sick. But flip that around the other way. If you are in an enclosed space, and you are with somebody for a long period of time, even if they're not generating a lot of virus particles when they talk, when they laugh, when they breathe, if you're in that enclosed space, as they are generating those particles, they can build up in the air and you can breathe in a low dose over time to become infected. So that's why outdoors is safer than indoors, because those particles can be diluted. That's why masks and other barrier precautions are helpful, because of course they block the transmission of the virus. So what can you do then if you think about these principles to protect yourself? Well, obviously the first thing you can do is limit your exposure time. The less time you're around somebody, the less chance of risk. And similarly, short exposures we know are very low risk, so you can relax a little bit about crossing someone in an elevator, crossing somebody in a hallway, because the chances that they can transmit the virus to you in that very short period are actually fairly low, unless they're really sick and there's a serious direct exposure. <clears throat> you can also look at your environment. So we obviously can't move all of our work outdoors, but whatever work we can do, we should think about working and moving outdoors. We can't actually uh, move air indoors uh, in buildings, but we can open windows. What we shouldn't do, though, is use fans, because fans can disperse the virus further than they would go normally. Similarly, you want to distance yourself from people, of course, because when they cough and breathe, the particles can only go a certain distance, and the further you are away, the less particles are going to reach you. 
And when I talk about outdoor, indoor, don't just think about the actual work you're doing, but think about your lunch breaks, your coffee breaks, and the time that you are waiting for things to happen at work, you can go outside. If you're gonna have a coffee break with someone, go outside two meters away, and at that point, your risk is very low. And if you have to be in the same space with somebody, that's where barrier precautions come in. Whether it's masks, which we think if they're on a sick person can reduce transmission up to 85%, or if they're on you, where most of us still think that they can reduce the chance that you inhale virus particles somewhat. And lastly, of course, major barrier precautions, plexiglass or whatever, when you have a fixed interval that you cannot avoid and a prolonged exposure, because the virus, of course, does not go through plastic. So these are just a few thoughts and tips, but remember, of course, as we learn more about the virus, the situation continues to change, and these guidances from public health and other agencies may, of course, change over time. So you need to be aware of what's going on, listening to new guidances, and be ready to change. So I hope these are useful, and I want you to go, have a great day, and of course, above all else, stay safe.